All right, Shalom. Kahalayim la Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shah ba Hashem Rakah Hakodash. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who ruling teach well. Most peace, love, and salutation to all the brothers from this work and truth to sincerity. Shalom. Uh, this is your young brother Batat back again through the spirit with another lesson. You know, so um, I don't really have a specific. Well, this this topic is going to be centered around order because you know I'll be watching a couple podcasts. You know, Fresh and Fit. Um, just pearly things. Um, watch some of Kevin Samuel's uh, content, even though he's past, he's deceased. You know, watching old videos. You know, uh, I watch a couple, you know, podcasts that address uh, situations. You know, mostly importantly around the dating. And um, this this is nothing but a sign that America's crumbling. You know, uh, the relationships of modern today are crumbling. You know. Because the Lord is the one that's doing this, man. You know, He's He's destroying the infrastructure of 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 America. Because if the families are not structured, then the the nation is not going to be structured. You know what I'm saying? So everything comes down to order. You know, and the order of America, which used to have order, but all through the elites, they have messed up the order and created chaos and confusion. That's why America is known as Babylon the Great because it's uh, of great great confusion. But um, a lot of our people don't acknowledge the old paths, the old way of things that used to be done, you know? The old order on things, which, you know, us through the, through the spirit, we acknowledge that things was better in the old days, you know? Um, so I hope I'm not confusing anyone, but everything was better in the old paths. And I'm a Lord willing to get a few precepts about order. And, you know, the point is, Yahweh Shai is going to come and reestablish proper order in the earth. You know, I know I'm a little bit all over the place. Salaki, I hope I ain't confuse anyone. But uh, the, the base of this conversation is about order. And the relationships of modern today are being uh, are at an all time low. You know, marriage is at all, divorce is high. Nobody's getting married. That shows that a society's crumbling, you know, because nobody's in that that happy Murph spirit, you know. So, this is the book of um, Isaiah chapter nine. I'm gonna start at verse six. It says, "For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder." Now, the government is in control of order in the kingdom. Yahweh Shai is gonna establish a new order in the earth. And we, we are waiting for this order to be established. We want this order to be established. <laughs> because when Yahweh Shai is reigning, everything, will, like the scripture says, when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Uh, marry, getting married today is, is, is not a good decision, you know. These women are using the system and abusing the system for their benefit. You know, especially with um, alimony, you know, child support, all of these unrighteous decrees are causing a lot of men to say of today in this society to not want to get married. And that shows that a society is crumbling. America is crumbling. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So when Yahweh Shah takes over, which he will real soon, the people will be rejoicing. Everybody will be happy. Well, Israel will be happy. You know, <laughs> well, let me add that in there. Israel will be happy. The heathens, they, they're they going to be, you know, they're going to be smitten down. They're going to be in our condition. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be in our position that we are in right now. Everything is going to change. Everything is going to change. So Israel is going to be happy. And ultimately, it's going to trickle down because the heathens, they're going to be, they're, gonna, they're waiting for a rulership. Whether they realize it or not, they're waiting for the rulership of Israel. They might not know it. They might not acknowledge it. They might not accept it. But the earth will be ran better if Israel is in power. Simple as, simple as that. Because we're going to do it. We're going we gonna to rule the earth in righteousness, man. You know? Oh, Salah. How did I get here? What, did I, what was I at? I must have accidentally tapped something. Uh, what? Damn, I just my mind just went blank. Oh uh, man. Uh, 
Um, what precept I just got? People mourn. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm back on track. You know, call I'm like Yahweh by Shemir. I'm shot. All my thoughts had left my head. This is Proverbs 29 and 2. It says, when the righteous are in authority, that means when they're in power. Because when you're in power, you have the greatest influence. Everybody does what you say. Let's go get that word, authority. You know, just get a look. It says the authority. Uh, got to pick out the, you know, got to pick out the bones. Authority. Got to find the right context. Oh, here it is. Invention of uh, influence. That's what it's all about. Influence. Command. That's what it's all about. Influence. Who has the greatest influence in the earth? And Esau has the greatest influence because he's in the power seat right now. Uh, streaming ethereal power. Wait, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to read that. Uh, influence. Act, acting upon character or destiny of men. So the character that is in the earth today is a wicked character. And like the scripture says in Sirach 10, as the governor, so is the uh, the people. So if the the governor is wicked, which I'm gonna get that little willing. If the governor or the ruler is wicked, then the people are gonna be wicked. Uh, so like I got a lot of things going on, so I'm gonna try to get to these the best I can. Remember these scriptures. It says influence, a power to affect persons or events, especially power based on prestige. And that right now Esau has the upper hand. Proverbs 29 and 2: When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But the, when the big, the when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So that's why Esau has influence inside the earth, and his influence is a wicked influence. That's why the people are mourning because with what with wickedness comes death, destruction, um, poverty. You know, a lot of things come with that, and especially how he runs the earth. This is the book of Sirach, chapter ten, verse one. A wise judge will instruct his people. Right? What is that? What is instruction? The law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible are instruction. The Bible tells you that over and over. So Esau does not keep the laws, so therefore there's no instructions. There's no, he's not, because he's also not a wise judge. A wise judge can be only a man of, your, of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah. It says, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So the, the government of Yahweh Shai will be well ordered. There will be a chain of command. There will be order in Yahweh Shai's government. But in America's government, there's no order. There's unstableness within America's government. And that's one of the, um, you know, you got the, the uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats. You know, you got a Senate house. These things are, uh, these people are, they're not on one accord. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't follow the same order. Everybody has their own individual opinion. And to some degree, they come to agreements on things. But when as far as the Democrats and Republicans, they're on two different pages, man. You know, that's the vision. A house divided cannot be stand, cannot stand. But Yahweh Ba'ashim Al-Shah's government is going to stand because there's not going to be no division. That's why you see the Lord sifting certain individuals. Because they don't want to follow that order that the Lord is going to set up. And the Lord can't have no disorder in his government. So that's why we must get ourselves in order. In order. <laughs> I know I'm saying order a lot. Forgive me. You know, we have to get ourselves in order. In order to um, be a part of that government. Uh, Sirach, Lord willing, Yahweh Shah. Sirach 10 and um, 3. You know what? Verse 2. It says, as the judge, you know, as actually I was at one, Sirach 10 and 1, the, a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Right, so there will be complete, uh, beautiful order in the kingdom. There's not going to be any division. Verse 2, it says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So who is the judge of modern day earth? Esau. Well, you know, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem is the ultimate judge, but, you know, Esau, uh, according to um, Job 9, 
9 to 24. He covered, uh, the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So that means Esau is the judge of this modern time. So if the judge of the earth is Esau, and Esau is known as the wicked of the scriptures, then what does that mean about his officers? Everybody's going to be wicked. If the judge is wicked, then everybody under him is going to follow his influence, his wicked vibration. Because that's why um, that's why the scripture says a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. So that little leaven from the judge can make everybody wicked. And that's what you see in America. Job, well, actually, that's what you see in the earth. Job chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So Esau is the modern day judge uh, that is um, controlling the earth. And it's no doubt about that. Sirach chapter 10, verse, verse 2 again. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So if the judge is wicked, the people are going to be wicked. If the judge is righteous, the people are going to be righteous. They follow the influence of the judge. That's how things were set up. I'm going I'm to get uh, the book of Judges. Because the Lord always set up a judge in Israel to order the people. And everybody followed the influence of the of the judge. You know what? Uh, let me, uh, Lord will not remember that. Judge Sirach chapter 10, verse 3, it says, A wise king destroyed his people. No, wait, did I finish to verse 2? Let me read verse 2 again. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So, like I said, if the ruler is wicked, then the people are going to be wicked. An unwise king destroys his people, but through the prudence of them that are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. And Esau is an unwise king. And his kingdom is being brung down by Yahweh Bashim al through the Spirit. Verse 4, the point. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and, he, and, and, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And that is talking about Yahweh Shai. So let's go to the book of Judges. Because the Lord always uh, set up judges. I just got to find the exact scripture. Will you bear with me a couple seconds? I believe it's in the book of Judges. Uh, yep, Judges 2 and... um. Judges 2 and 7, um, 16, it says, Nevertheless, Yahweh raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. So every time Israel would go off and they sin, the Lord will raise up a judge. And, well, actually, every time Israel will sin, they will go off. The Lord will use a heathen nation to come and take them down, put them in captivity. And then the Lord will raise up a judge out of that captivity to deliver the people out of the hand of the enemy. And they will go back to the land. And the same kept happening over and over again. Okay, it says verse all throughout the book of Judges, if you read it, it kept happening over and over again because Jake is naturally rebellious. Verse 17, it says, And ye and ye that would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of Yahweh, but they did they did not so and when Yahweh raised them up judges then Yahweh was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge so as long as the judge was alive the Lord used that judge to deliver them at that time period this is for it repented for it repented that Yahweh, it's like it. For it repented Yahweh because of the, their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers. So that's why Jacob needs leadership, man. 
Jake needs a leader. J Jake needs a judge set over them, or they will go, they will go haywire, man. They need order. Uh, order needs to be established in Israel. Look at Israelites today. They don't. They're out of order because they didn't have any order. Up uh, under Esau, Esau let us have. Esau let Jake do what the fuck they want to do. In wickedness. You know, so how about Shmuel Shah has to establish order in Israel, or Jacob be through, man. And in the times we living in today, the Lord needs is gonna is trying to establish order. He's gonna establish it with Yahweh Shah Mashiach. It says, and it came to pass when when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way and the anger of Yahweh was hot against Israel and he said because that this people had transgressed my covenant which I have commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice I will also not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died that through them I might prove Israel whether they will keep the way of Yahweh to, to walk therein after their fathers did keep it or not therefore Yahweh left those nations without driving them how hastily neither the, uh, delivered he them in the hand, hand of Joshua so the Lord left those heathen nations around Israel to prove it to prove Israel and what did the Lord what was the Lord uh, what did the Lord prove about Israel that they fucking wicked man let me see uh, the Lord always trying to prove is is uh, Israel I believe it's a scripture in Deuteronomy Is it here it is Deuteronomy 8 and 1 it says all the commandments which I command you this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which Yahweh will swear unto your fathers and thou shall remember all the way which Yahweh thy power led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no so that's the same thing that was spoken about in judges so the lord always proved israel to see what was in their heart see what they were going to obey and how many times did israel just not follow too much too much israel was all has always been rebellious man you know a vast majority of our people are naturally fucking rebellious you know so that's why the lord was fucking Jacob in the wilderness for those those 40 years because they was he was proving them verse 3 it says and he humbled thee and su suffered thee to hunger and fed th thee with manna which thou knowest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live so that's why the Lord spent so long our people was so long in that uh, in the wilderness because he was proving Jacob and guess what Jacob kept doing Jake kept failing the test Jake kept failing the fucking test man our people of uh, have a natural stay stubborn man it is a rebel the Lord knows us Our subscriptions I'm thinking of uh, this is uh this is a very beautiful precept I just thought of uh, Deuteronomy 9 and 24 ye have been rebellious against Yahweh from the day that I knew you so Jacob has always been rebellious man 
That's why two thirds of our people are not gonna get this truth in the times that we're living in now. So I kind of strayed off the topic of uh, the the initial topic of the lesson, but this is shows that order is needed. You know, this is Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse six. It says, "For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder." And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, which is referring to Yahweh Shahab Mashiach, our Lord. This is that, that, that son that's going to have the government upon his shoulder. Verse 7, it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Right, because Yahweh Shah is going to rule forever. Um, Upon the throne of David, that right, I let you know it's, uh, it, it's through the lineage, because Yahweh Shah is through the lineage of David. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and for, with justice from henceforth even forever. Because King David is going to be under Yahweh Shah, man. He's that, he's that great king. The Lord loves King David, man. Um, let's see, it says, uh, I'm going to read it again from the top. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. It says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon, the, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this so the lord is going to accomplish his word he's going to do what he said he was going to do he's going to establish the, uh the order in israel it's a scripture that's come to mind isaiah chapter what is it chapter two this is isaiah chapter two verse one wait is it no it ain't is it chapter uh yeah, it's Isaiah 2 and 1. It says, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain, which the word mountain represents the government, of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the of the mountains. That means the, Israel is going to be that top government. And he's going to establish it. That's what we're waiting for. It says, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Meaning, all nations are going to be under the order of Israel. Ultimately. Verse 3, and, the, and, the, and many people shall go and say, come ye, and let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, the government of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. Now, what is the ways of the Lord? The law, statutes, and commandments. The, the the heathens are gonna obey the laws, statutes, and commandments because what? It's a new government. It's a new sheriff in town, and his name is Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and he's gonna order his government. Uh, J uh, Jeremiah six and six sixteen. Thus said Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. So we're asking the Lord for the old way of living, because this new way of living that Esau has introduced us to, we don't like this shit. We don't like it. We're disgusted. It's throw up. We're vomiting this shit up. We we appreciate. We we miss the old ways, man. Reading the scriptures, having women being under subjection, instead of being li uh, liberally gathered abroad. Our children ordered right. Our houses ordered right. Man, everything needs order. With there's with. Everything needs order, man. Um, Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus said Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Ye shall find rest for your souls. And if everything was ordered right, our women was right, you know, our kids was right, everything will be, it'll be rest for your souls because you won't have to worry. But the, the way that this society is set up, 
Esau has did a number on our people's minds and they're corrupted. So they're going to need rehabilitation. And it's going to come by fire. <laughs> it says, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. And that's Jacob. That, that's, that's what Jacob's mentality is. In their minds, they're saying they don't want to walk in the ways of the Lord. Even though the ways of the Lord are way better, the scriptures tell you that the ways of the Lord are not grievous, but it also tells you the ways of the wicked are grievous. But Jake rather have uh, this the hard, uh, the hard knock life. You know, they want this hard knock life. They don't want that 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 uh, that righteous that righteous life, man. They want this bullshit that they've been accustomed to. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. And many people shall go and say, "Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, which is the government, and and the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths." What are the paths of the Lord? The law, statutes, commandments, man, that light. Walking in the commandments. Because the government shall go out of what? Israel I believe it's going to say that. It says, For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So that right there tells you what's going, what's going to happen when we take over. It's going to be a righteous kingdom. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and we shall rebuke many people because these people are going to want to constantly stay in their wickedness. So there's going to be correction being handed out. And, and it's not going to be good, man. And they shall beat their plowshares it's like they shall beat their sword into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So this is going to be fulfilled when Jacob takes over, man. It's not been fulfilled yet. There's still war going on in the earth. So that lets you know that Israel is not ruling. This government or this mountain, is, which is referring to government, has not been established yet. And once it is established, then... You will see what the scriptures say will be fulfilled. There won't be no wars. There won't be, you know, all the things that's going on today. None of this shit will be happening. Because Yahweh Shai will use his government to nip that shit in the bud. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. So, um, let me see. I thought of another scripture. Can't remember what, it, what the hell it was. Lord willing, it comes back to me. But, um. I believe that's all I had. If I can't remember this scripture, let me see. Because I got that point. Uh, uh, out of Zion shall go forth the law, which is talking about Israel. We're going to push the law throughout the earth, and everybody going to have to get on the lay down, man. Esau did the same thing when he took over. Everybody had to follow his laws under the penalties of death. You know, had to uh, follow the customs of the heathens. So what? how is it far-fetched? How is it many, any much different in our kingdom? But the difference is, I was going to be in righteousness, man. See if I can find any precepts concerning order. If not, and the spirit don't let me remember, I mean, I may, I may have got it. Um, or well, willing this is suffice, and brothers be edified with this lesson. I'm gonna skim through a couple of these precepts. See if I've seen any that I like. If I do, I'm gonna bring them out. Oh, Job 10 and 22 looks like a good precept. I'm gonna have to look a, look more into it. Oh, that's a good precept. So, uh, Psalms 37 and 20, 23. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh. And that's why Yahweh Shai is going to order his kingdom right. That's why his kingdom is going to be um, perfect. You know, because the, the Lord is the one that's going to be guiding the steps of Yahweh Shai, which he has always done. And that same vibration is going to trickle down. It says, And he delighted in his way. Okay, uh, uh, 
Um, Psalms 50 and 21, it says, These things hast thou done, and I have kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as, the, such a, as and one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thy eyes. And that's what the Lord, that's what Esau is seeing. The Lord is setting Israel in order before his eyes. Psalms 119 and 133. Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. And that's what you're going to see real soon. But that's a good that's a good precept for exhortation, man. You know? Don't have any iniquity have a dominion over us because we're living in a world full of iniquity. And, and the scripture says, he that de departed from sin maketh himself a prey. So... We're under attack even more by these evil influence of uh, of Babylon, the, these demons, even more because we departing from our old man. Okay. Uh, um. So let's go back to Job ten. Let's see what the, read the context of that scripture. Job 10. Um, dark, before I go whence I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death the, a land of darkness as darkness itself and the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness um, that is a good that's a good precept if I'm not mistaken you know what I'm going to look more into it you know more I believe that's uh, referring, if I'm not mistaken, to America. But I could be wrong. I believe that's what, you know, I'm, you know, uh, it's not neither here nor there. I gotta, I'm a, I'm a fact check that, I'm a fact check that. So I'm not gonna even go into it. But um, Lord willing, man, you better uh, was edified with this lesson. Uh, real quick, I believe that's all I had through the spirit. You know, how was I was gonna set up order? We can't wait for that order to be established, then we'll be able to live. You know what I'm saying? You won't you won't see the earth will not be the way it, the earth will not look how it looks now. It will not smell how it smells now. You know what I'm saying? Everything will be much better when Yahweh takes over, and that's the whole message, man. Yahweh is bringing something better that we had than we have now, and until He comes and bring that, we're gonna constantly, you know, send up the prayers, send up the curses that He comes and does what. The Lord want us want him to do and what we also want him to do, which is establish order in the earth and establish righteousness in the earth. Cause that's what right with righteousness comes order. So with that, Lord will leave brother edify with this lesson. I'm gonna close out by saying Kahalayam La, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the others of great millstone, rule and teach well. Much peace, love, and salutations to the brothers doing his work in truth and in sincerity. I want to say shalom, kormiyash Allah, wa abba abba, wa abba arwam, shalom.